So when it comes to leadership, disrupting the norm is actually the norm. In fact, it is impossible to lead without shifting the tide or the wave in a new direction. In fact, I put it in my notes like this. I said, leadership often disrupts what's comfortable because it forces us to pursue the contrary. You can't change the hearts and the minds of the people that you influence if you are going the same direction as they do all the time. It is impossible. You cannot look at your kids and say, I want you to continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. But if you could, go the different direction. It's not going to happen. Leadership always at some level feels uncomfortable because you're stepping out to influence in a way that shifts the tide away from where it currently is. But that always involves some level of disruption. The question that I hope, and I say this sometimes, but I really do. I pray that, I hope, I pray that you don't sleep sometimes. I really do. That that the questions keep you up at night. The question that I hope just ruins you and keeps you up is what if, what if God were with you? What if you turn the opposite direction of where the crowd was going and saying, I'm going to move in a different direction? What if God actually provided everything that you needed to do it? Some of you have dreamed about a specific business, but nobody understands why you would minimize your profit margins to give some of it away. And they look at you as starting and they're like, you're not, you know, you're not good enough. You don't know enough about it. You're too young. Where's the money going to come from? And they criticize you, criticize you, criticize you. But you have this vision of what could and should be for the future. And what happens in your heart is you go, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should. And my my thing for you is, what if you took that step and God were with you and it was a prompting from God? I'll tell you this, there'll be a day where you don't even remember the critics' names. That was more aggressive than I meant it to be, but it's true. Like, what if God were with you? What if God were with you when it comes to debt? What if God were with you in your relationships? What if when you moved out of some of the relationships that you were in, that God were with you in the new friendships that you had? Some of you are single and you're looking out and you're like, I want to get married and there's this guy, whoo, he's hot, whatever that is. And you're feeling all those things and you've been dating him for a long time, but deep in your heart, you know, that's not who you need to be with. Some of you, you look out, you've been dating her for a long time, and all your friends are like, here's what you should do. And you're like, well, that's what I want to do. And you're trying to do all these kinds of things, but then you're trying to have a relationship that honors God. But everyone around you is telling you, no, no, do it this way. It's fine. Why not test drive the car before you buy it? Like all that sort of thing. And you're like, no, no, no. There's something inside me that's telling me to do it this way. What if God were with you in those difficult decisions and you did it differently than everybody else and you experienced something? that other people don't experience. I'll tell you this, when you're 95, if you make it to 95, what's gonna matter is not the people that are pulling you away from the direction that's God calling you to. What's gonna matter is how you answer this. How many dreams have you missed already simply because you didn't follow the prompting that God was leading you towards? How much regret do you currently have because you didn't follow the promptings that God was leading you to? 